when you start the meeting, before you say anything, do you guys have any questions that can address before we move forward? Because give them the chance to speak first in case that way if there is something that you might have to talk about and you could just address. Because I've been in a position where like I spoke too soon mm -hmm. and they would have told me everything I needed, but I was like such in a hurry to get it done that like I just shot myself in the foot. <laughs> Thank you, man. I prepped a few things. Um, I've really been loving the content, man. Like just the calls, like all the YouTube stuff, like it was so game changing, man. So I was like, man, I gotta, even like some of the other calls that you've done on your channel, really, really dig everything you have up there, man. I appreciate that. Yeah. Do you, do you want me to just kind of just dive into what I have here? Do yep. you have any questions? Let's, let's get off? to it. I'll ask you questions along the way. I got together some of the like criteria you have on your site, but maybe I just start with like a little bit of background just about like what I'm doing right now. Okay. Um, so I'm basically like a freelance. I just like do like kind of a, a like jack of all trades freelance. Right. But um, where that has kind of trended is towards more like DP, but through the whole like first few years, I'm just getting into like my fourth year of like full-time freelancing, right? So I've definitely put a lot of effort into like the production side and like getting really competent with production. But, um, you know, when you're kind of in those first few years and you're saying yes to everything, like kind of along the way, like you get your own clients, you end up passing through projects, like totally start to finish. And like, as things have sort of been trending, like very freelance DP for me, I'm still, I still get clients and like people still like send clients my way. And what I'm kind of like in the middle of is in this like growth period where like like things are kind of coming into focus in like two avenues where it's like okay cool like i really like the freelance side of things where i can like step into you know agency stuff whatever but i still see like a ton of value and a ton of like sustainability in being able to like have my own clients and maybe like formulate this like production company because i'm like already doing it so the the big differences i've identified where it's like you know when you're just in like the production lane the real difference when you're actually passing through clients is like the sales side, the pre-production side and like customer experience. One of the biggest things I really wanted to like bounce off you is in the entire, like I've been really struggling with certain parts of my like discovery process to be more specific about that, like figuring out like what people want and what to suggest. So to give you an example of this, you have certain people that come into the door and they want something very straightforward where it's like, yo, we want this about us. Yo, we want this, like, you know, we're, we're trying to, uh, bump up our hiring. We want some recruitment material. We want to talk to some workers, blah, blah, blah. And it's like very like, okay, cool. Like tell me who we're shooting, whatever. But some, some clients I'm noticing, they, co they more so come at you with like their needs and their goals. And there's not really like a, you know, they're not coming at you with the, like, this is what you need to make for this. And that it, like, I've had certain experiences where like, I'm talking to a client like that and I'm not really like handling it well. Cause like, there's a lot of back and forth and there's just this, there's this, uh, there's this like pattern of discovery, like taking forever. Like where, where can we finally get to a point where I can put a price on this? Like, you know, this is what you need. This is how many days it's going to be. So yeah, that that's like one thing where I'm like, really like kind of in the mud with right now. Let's, let's jump with that. Um, cause, cause I, I know we can go through a lot of different things. Um, I'm ready yeah. to get a good feeling about this call. So, all right. Are you recording any of your discovery calls? I do sometimes. Do you listen back to them? I have, yes. Okay. I, I admit it's not consistent. So you listening to those discovery calls, have you pinpointed any areas where you see that the call is either like not coming together or where you notice that like either things are just aren't clicking? I don't think any that I've recorded yet. Like some of the ones, I haven't recorded any of the like really challenging ones. Like mm -hmm. I'm taking notes during the calls. Okay. But I mean, like maybe I'm, I'm wondering if like, I actually have a scenario like right now where I'm okay. kind of like stuck with this one client. Should I, should I just like it. go into yeah, that? Yeah, go ahead. Cool. So, um, 
I got a referral for this security company. They do like security systems and like, you know, key fob type of security mm-hmm. for like commercial uh, B2B. Buildings and stuff. and stuff like that. Yep. Yeah. So they like redid their website and they have these like really specific areas of their website that they want videos and like so yeah i kind of have like a questionnaire like i I sent them a discovery form that i have they really were like we want you to come in and like tell us what we need like they told they did tell me some goals and some interests that they have they're like yeah we got this about us video that a college student made for us we're kind of like there were things we didn't like about the process and we would be open to maybe doing another one that one i think would be a little more straightforward for me to like work with and, and price but some of these other ones, they're like, we have these sections of our website, like on one hand, like we like this kind of motion graphics narrated kind of thing. But on the other hand, like our CEO might like talk in front of a camera, teleprompter style. So they're kind of like throwing out a lot of spitballing, a lot of things, but just nothing so, has really come into focus. I feel like. Yeah. So I think that this is one of the situations that if you're having this conversation with like with difficult clients, I don't know, I'm just going to live on difficult uh, yeah. for it, but it's like, you want to record those calls because I'm going through mm-hmm. it right now. Like we just booked like a $18,000 shoot for next week. And like our initial nice. call with what the client's asking like this week, is like, hey, we didn't get these kind of models for the casting. I'm like, you didn't ask for that. And But they're like, well, we mentioned this like briefly. I'm just like, I wasn't very clear with them about what it is exactly that they wanted. So yeah. I guess starting from the beginning, don't send discovery sheets out to clients. The way okay. that I do it, like I have a discovery form that I work with them, but I will go through the discovery form with them to actually have a conversation with them. Cause like when you send them a discovery form to do something, you're giving them homework. Clients uh-huh. don't want to do homework. They got enough shit to do. So like for them to sit there and fill out a form, they're like, hey, we have this pre-production process and we sit down for about 30 minutes to an hour. We go over a form that I really dive deep into some of the things that I think video could benefit your business. Are you guys open to doing like a little bit of strategy before your call? And then in the sense, be like, this strategy normally runs normally runs at five hundred dollars. Are you guys open to this? And then you guys can take the strategy to anyone you want. That's just the way I do it because like I don't like working for free. And that's just pre-production, right? You're spending hours to put this together as a client. So I normally tell them like, hey, if you don't have the game plan, we can come up with the game plan for you, or we can help you take on the game plan. But like you can take this game plan and go to anybody you want. I'm just here to try to help us so I take this for you. I'll start wow. recording the phone calls. I'll start going over the questionnaires with them. One thing that you mentioned. So like when they say they didn't like the process when they worked with a college kid, did you ask them what about the process that they did not like? I did. Yes. Okay. I was like, what did you like? What did you not like? They said that the turnaround was very slow. The end Usually product the is like the end product was not bad it wasn't like really really terrible like you know they got the they talked to some employees they they went out to some job sites and filmed some really bait like it looks pretty basic Mm -hmm. so they're like we're open to like what you would do differently blah 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 and um you know, I said like more focused pre-production because it did seem a little bit like spray and pray like a Mm -hmm. little bit. And then production value would be one where it's like, that might not mean anything to a a client, I feel like. Yeah, it doesn't. Um, Okay, so then they mentioned about the website stuff and motion graphics. When a client throws me a lot of different things like that, the best way I found to do it is when you when you send a bid to a client, do you give them like a price beforehand or like how are you giving out these bids to clients i make a proposal i'll even say off the bat like that's also a frustrating part of this process because it's like calls 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 like digging and scratching what they want and then i gotta spend all this time making a proposal and it's like oh my god like i can't (laughs) like i can't keep doing this so yeah i make these proposals like i try to recap like what they told me in it Mm -hmm. what their goals were and it was like boom like about us video, it's going to be a two day shoot or whatever, a one day shoot, you know, has the quote in there, some general comments about like what they said their timeline was. But yeah, it's such a time sink. Like I know, um, like some people were sending these out like through their CRMs in like way more of a simple way. I've done a little bit of like a discourse with like colleagues and stuff. And like some people, you know, they have it really down fast so that they're not burning a ton of time. And you can, you know, it's like a tension between accuracy and speed with this mm-hmm. quoting thing just like what are we doing what's the price you know so normally what i do in the situations i mm-hmm. i'll tell them right up front like i'd be like hey 
um, security company. Okay, so I have an idea of what I think you might, you guys might need. Just ballparking this, it could be as high as like fifteen thousand and as low as five grand. Are we in the same ballpark? Because the last thing I want to do is go back to my office and put together some proposal for you guys, and it's just not where you guys want. So they'll be like, yeah. We were thinking like, you know, 10,000. I'm like, perfect. You know what I'm doing? I'm going to give you three pricing options. So I give them three pricing options in a sense of like, hey, you want, like what you mentioned, like, hey, you want a motion graphics video and then you want this video? Like I'll give them three so they can end up like picking from them. And what mm -hmm. I do is just this, like literally, here's our unofficial proposal. I want to I'll send over a formal one. Cause like, I don't want to spend time. I used to write so many proposals and I hear back from people. So like, I pretty much have this copied within my email, email now as a template as like option one, two, and three. And this is all I send to clients now. So the good thing with this one, we ended up doing this video for them. And now we're actually about to produce like a $36,000 video project for them just based on what we started doing here. But it was like, because wow. at the same time, like pretty send proposal for them, for them to go through the proposal. It's just like, a, it's like I said, it's a lot of work for them. So like me just bullet pointing, hey, option one two three this is how much you're gonna pay this is what you're gonna get it makes it very simple for them the other good thing about this is when you give them a three pricing options if they're shopping you against other competitors it makes it really hard for them to figure out like okay well he's charging this much for that so now it's just like okay who's providing us the most value so for this you're giving them more options within different price points so like with them not knowing exactly what they want i think you in a sense, like you as the, you know, DP or video strategist, I think that's what, what you got to figure out. Like, Hey, I think like, what are your goals for this project? So like, Hey, for this, you know, for the webs, for the page about how it works, I think we could do a motion graphics video for this because it's complex or we could do animation. And I think that's where you have to come in with recommendations for them. Really sure. think you need to figure out like, Hey, what are the videos that you guys like, what do you want these videos to do? And what exactly videos you need? And then I can come up with the best recommendations to figure out which videos will work best for you. So they'll let them list everything that they want. And that's me like, okay, so we're talking about four videos, no post reduction day of filming. We could probably do this project between, you know, 20,000 the high end and like maybe 12 on the low end or we are we in the same ballpark and okay. like and then you just wait for them to reply and this is all done over a phone call or a zoom meeting but the same thing like i did the exact same thing with this uh we're shooting for a makeup company next week and we ended up getting their budget up to like, I think it's like 18,000 and like 700 now or something like that. But like exactly the same thing. I'm like, what do you guys need? And I like, I let them list out everything that they need. And then I try to figure out like how much is it going to cost for me to produce this? And then I would charge another like 20% on top of that as like my production fee services. But usually I let them do the brain dump. And then like, same thing, like when they mention certain things, I just take notes like very specific on like exact words that they were saying. Things. So like, you know, with you, you see you're mostly DP, full-time freelancer, you're struggling with discovery. It's like all the big words that like in my head, like, like a little thing goes off. I write those down and then I usually recap these sort of clients. So you be like, Hey, so let me get this straight. So you're mostly DP, you're full-time producer, you're working on projects with like agencies, but also getting your own clients. But you're having, uh -huh. you're struggling right now with the discovery phase. Is this correct? Yeah. So then I'm like, okay, so what I think we could do with this, I think we could do a little bit, um, you know, we can maybe for, for you to get new clients and then we can maybe, you know, do some changes to your website and then we could, you know, maybe come up with a new system for your discovery form and how you're taking on clients. So, you know, normally for us to do something like this, for us to really like lay this out for you, make all these changes, it's between like three to $5,000. So like I just recap exactly what they're mentioned to me. And then it'd be like, well, well, 5,000 is a lot. I'm like, okay, so what did you have in mind? Because even when a client tells you, like, I love when they're like, we don't have a budget, but like, 5,000, and be like, no, that's too much. I'm like, so how much were you thinking? They'd be like, well, we're thinking maybe two grand. I was like, for two grand, I could probably do like a four hour shoot and give you a 30 second video. You know what I mean? And that's like where I know where to cut my losses at. No, I think, I think the, the real thing that resonates, that resonates is, is this like just throwing out ranges and, and, you know, you showed me this like tiered pricing. And that is actually what they asked for. They mm -hmm. want like a tiered like options, my recommendation. So yeah, I think when it comes to like making the choice for what they need, like part of me is, is, um, is wants to really drive them to do the like CEO talking head ones. Cause he, oh. he is a talker and not every company has that in their pop in like has that to offer, you know, like some mm -hmm. people, like they don't even want to talk or they, no. they just really aren't, don't have it. And, you know, I'm not like a, a motion graphics heavy studio. So you don't, I, you don't have to be my dude. preference. 
What's I that? mean, you don't have to be like, dude, some of the people that have been finding on Fiverr to do stuff like overseas, like I've been mind blown. Like I showed Chris, <laughs> I was with Chris though, like a couple weeks ago and I showed him some of the stuff. And he's like, how much did you charge for that? I was like 2,500 bucks. And he's like, yeah, I've charged like 25 grand per frame to do that. I was like, what? And he's like, yeah, there's like, you're just, you're competing in the wrong market. He's like, there's people that are going to pay you a lot more. And wow. surely enough, like that $36,000 deal we're about to close, it's based on doing animation on people like we found on Fiverr to do things so i never like and that's the thing i've learned is like if you're able to charge enough money it doesn't matter if you could do it or not and that's something i you know i learned from chris and he's like you guys base your value and your price on what you can do i base my value on what the world can do so like he's like i'll take on you know two hundred thousand dollar projects to build a website that we've never done before but it's like two hundred thousand dollars i could figure it out how to hire somebody that can make this website for me he's like the problem is when you're trying to charge three thousand dollars for a video you're leaving no room for profit you're not leaving any room for risk like how are you going to be able to make these things happen and then still make money and i was like all right makes sense i guess that's just takes some like acquaint acquainting to do where you're just like you just throw something so like you, you make your margin for error really large double it has to be double so like let's say my wow. animation is like two thousand dollars i'm charging a client for ideally you want to charge them five so there's that room like you want that room for it in case a mistake happens but then you also want the profit margin and yeah. like for you to get somebody that does two, like two thousand dollars for graphic on on fiverr like it's it's already like very expensive like we've done some other animation videos was like between like three to five hundred bucks um one of the ones i don't know if you saw the the last commercial i just did for a uh junk removal thing the guy did some crazy animation on the background for like a hundred bucks like really good shit i was like and then like what he did was like green screen quality work and like we didn't even use a green screen i was like blown away at like uh let me try to pull it up <laughs> quick. get rid of your junk old furniture renovation debris yard waste so the whole background is just we'll do all the work for <laughs> but dude this is a, that's the thing like this thing was like so you just filmed that dude speaking yeah like we, we filmed the whole uh because like I, ideally what we we're gonna have first for this spot was gonna be like i just wanted i told him like hey can i just get like you know a piece of garbage here here and there and he's like, hey, how about we do this instead? I was like, all right, cool. So like, this is originally, so originally all I had was this, it's like a literally a white background with three dots on it, dude. And then the guy did all of that. I was like, how much? He's like a hundred bucks. So it's like fucking send me the offer. It's like, let's go. <laughs> but you know, like that production value to the commercial, like dude, the client saw that and he's like, that's way better than what I thought. You know what I mean? So it was just like, and with that guy, that's your thing too, with Fiverr, you're going to have like hit and misses with who you're working. But yeah. that guy charged me originally, Originally, he quoted me like 40 bucks. And I was like, hey, I got $100 to do this. Like, what can you do? He's like, $100? He's like, I could, like, I'll take it home for you. So I hired him for 100 bucks. I hired another guy for $70. The other $70 guy wasn't bad, but wasn't great compared to him. But like, for 170 bucks for me to, try to add some graphics and add some production value to like my videos. Like it was worth the money. Um, so, so basically I'm kind of hearing like on one hand, y like you could knock it out of the park for that price, which, you know, compared to like a domestic contractor is extremely low, but should you have needed to use somebody here that would have charged you like, you know, like just like real full rate, like who mm -hmm. knows, like a thousand or whatever. Probably like 1500 bucks. Yeah. So, so, so basically it's like you have to know how much it would cost at its most expensive and then obviously it's at your discretion to like see where else you can get it and like if it will be good enough i guess that's like the the uh yeah so i'm charged i'm charging my client us rates right you know what i mean like i'm charging my client us rates because like in a sense I'm charging a rate to, for me to manage this, right? Because like what happens if it goes wrong, I got to fix it. But the same thing, like right now, I just took on a new editor. Um, He's in the Philippines, seven bucks an hour. You know what I mean? So like with that, with him and my process now, as soon as we're done with the project, I send him the proxies with the project file. He pretty much reviews all the projects. Like I'm like, hey, just trip, like just give me the fat, like take away all the other shit. They just give me the juicy parts, like scrub the project for me. And so that allows me to be taking on a lot more projects right now, but it's like, 
my clients are still paying $75 an hour for an editor to do this stuff. And that's where like us as, you know, cinematographers and DPs, this is where we make our money as like within our profit margin. Because dude, I've, I've hired people here in the United States that I pay $25 to. And I promise you, they're not working as hard as the people I'm paying seven to $9 overseas for. Like the guys right now I have in the Philippines that they're getting seven to $9. They're like happy to work every day. They're thankful. They're like, yo, what do you need next? You know, versus the other guys, like, you know, they're getting to it. Or like, I remember one guy, he's like, told me he took four hours to review like 30 minutes of footage. I'm like, dude, we shot it like very quick commercial. Like, how did you take four hours to review 30 minutes of footage? Like, you know I mean? When you're doing the math, it's just like, you know, it doesn't work out. But yes, yeah, so, I mean, I know you went a little bit off track there, but, sure. um, you know, with the discovery part, I think it really comes down to like letting, letting them do the brain dump, take down our notes of where you find the issues that, that they're having, and then just be able to offer them a like multi-tier solution for what um they do or what they want. And I, I think the best example for this, I like I, I always preach in my videos, like look at bigger companies. So like, you know, go look yeah. at Apple. Apple, when you go buy a MacBook, hey, here's a cheap one. It still will do what you need it to do, but it's not as good as the second one. And the third one might be too expensive and you probably don't need that. And eventually that's where I price anchor them like high. I'd be like, hey, $12,000 to do this, you know, 30 second video. You know, on my surprise, this client was like, yo, let's do the $12,000 one. I thought they're going to opt in for like the eight grand one because I did like, I was 4,500. The other one was like seven to eight. And the last one was like 10 or 12. And you're like, Let, show me what you want for the 12,000. I'd be like, all right, let's, let's do that one. So um, I just one one question that comes to mind is like, so yeah, when it comes to like invoicing and kind of like not super specifically itemizing these things, all these like what ifs and mm -hmm. like buffers and margins for error with costs, like how do you speak for all, how do you like categorize and speak for all those prices? I don't. You just don't. I don't. It's like, I like just, this is it. yeah, so like, um... like right now, I don't, I don't get like super specific with my invoices is like just many hours editing, blah, 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 blah. But if I can categorize like pre-production. No, so like that, and I think that's where, and I used to do that, but then okay. the problem is when they, when they look at something like that, then they're, they're able to like nitpick certain things. So like, um, you know, for this one here, I just have like one full day of, a production to capture interviews and product shots based on a script basic video titles and like here i don't tell them anything but like hey you get three rounds of revision so like in my contract when they actually go to sign it i'll tell them like hey so based on this you know forty five hundred dollar option when you guys chose you get three rounds of revisions you get three days to give me feedback and that's it so like in a sense i know what's gonna what that's going to require and let me try to pull two days of production up to 10 hours of coverage additional hours but at 300 production crew cast and call management catering gear and studio rental off footage to build blah, blah, blah. so then also by the way you're, you're going to get a copy of this contract for you to use um so you know then here i just list out you like you know description what they're going to get revisions two revisions per photo for their production does not allow for video editing and additional shoot days, additional hours, version stock footage, or actors. So like, I just lay it out on like, you know, what is it that they actually are going to get? But like this, this right here. So like, imagine me sending this to the client before we came into the, the price of what they were actually going to want or need, right? This is going to be like so much for them to be like, oh shit, like, let me look at all this. I'm like, hey, what about this? I don't want to give them reasons to not want to sign or to like, because at this point, if they're already telling me like, hey, let's do this for 18,000, you know what I mean? They're already committed. There's a uh, sunk, sunk time bias, I think it's called. Um, but like, they're already committed to this number, they're already committed to this price. So at this point, for them to go back to look for somebody else, the whole team's already invested in this. So like, they only see this contract or this agreement when they tell me like, hey, we want to go with option B. And then with this guy too, um, they actually, he actually asked me for a, um, he asked me for a uh, a breakdown of like, well, how much is it going to cost? He's like, I've done this in the past. And those are like the ones that kind of hate. I'm like, I don't want to do this shit. So then I got to sit there and yeah. go to sheets and make this shit. So, all right. So then here, you know, shoot days, blah, blah, blah. So pull like, you know, pre-production. -pre here, like they actually wanted to see this. I've only, I only do it when they ask for it. If they don't ask for it, like I'm not, like I have an idea of what I'm going to charge, but like, you know, $3,000 is my day rate. So like, you know, 45 
4,500 to 8,500, doing a behind the scenes videographer, a photographer for the day, the makeup artist, models, gear and prep rental, studio rental, catering meals, travel, and then like this is a grand total. And then we did an additional half day on top of this, which brought their proposal up to like the 18.9. But yep. this is the only time the day will we'll get something like this for me. Other than that, I have an idea of what it's going to cost to do like a talking head interviews. But that's where like, I know my baseline. So like where the first one I showed you, the three pricing tiering, I knew my baseline to do that project is 4,500. But asking the client, I'm like, hey, these projects range, like where, where's the ballpark for this? And I always give examples of like, you know, if I'm a realtor and I'm showing a bunch of houses, like your budget might be, you know, I could show you a $300,000 home, but he's like, you might be in the market for a 400,000 or maybe a really good home at, at 450. He's like, are you open to seeing things like that? I just want to know where your budget lays so I can find out like, hey, what works for you? Because then also I can get really creative. I can bring in some other people into the team. They could do some really cool stuff. So like ballpark, where are we talking about? And then she's like, she's like, we can go up to 10,000. She's like, we're looking to spend between 10 to like $5,000. I'm like, all right, cool. So that's right there, like 4,500. I knew that was like my baseline to be like, I was come in, you know, half day shooting and, you know, a 25 second video with some basic graphics. That was going to be 4,500. And everything else above that, I was like, okay, I know for $7,000, I can go to Fiverr. Even if I, like, if I spend a thousand dollars on Fiverr, with like graphic artists, like I can turn out some really dope shit. So like I already put that to the side and I was like, okay, now I can get a makeup artist and I, I can add these little things to make the production better. But if I just price them on what was needed, you know what I mean? Like it's not that they're going to get a bad project, but it was just like, I'm just giving them the, the base model, like where I know by asking them their budget, where their range is at, I can bring a lot more to the table. So where I'm kind of thinking is the way forward with this is just give them price for everything that they asked for. Like what I need to do is like, they want like about us refresh, like redone. They want this whole like service video thing that I said there, oh, well, we, we either want to do this motion graphics thing. We either want to do this. And then they were talking about like an FAQ series. And I've done, I've done that kind of stuff before. Mm -hmm. So I think I might just like price it all in kind of a tiered way that isn't, it isn't so like precious about like super specific proposal, time intensive thing that's way too specific. So that, that document, you, the first document you brought up, I mm -hmm. feel like really kind of provides like insight to like how to approach it. And, and, and the best way to do this, if you're not doing this, dude, I highly recommend it. Start using Vidyard. Uh, Vidyard? Vidyard. Oh, have you, I feel like I remember you maybe bringing that up. Oh, did I bring it up all the time? Like I've told, <laughs> the biggest deals I've done have been using Vidyard. Let me show you. So I'm literally here on Fiverr booking artist stuff on here. So like, <laughs> did, so like this, oh, like I'll just show you this real quick. But like I had him to do uh, on this one here, like I, as a hey, point to what you want gone. Apartment. I want him to do the magic stuff on it. He's like 30 bucks. I can make the, the magic disappear. I was like, I was like done. I was like, I was like $30. I was like, you know, it just makes it because I could do it without it. And I just had a sound like a sound effect to it. But like with the visuals on top of that, because like my goal is always to produce something better for my next client and project. So I could show because like right now with like I was going more heavy into this uh like uh motion graphics and like after effects in our videos that's when you're able to get, you know, a lot bigger projects. So this one here is the same client I just showed you before that we started off at that like 4,500 to 12,000. So like right now we're, we're literally about, it was, was $32,000. So I pretty much laid it out for her. I was like, hey, to complete the brand video, it's gonna be 15,000 to uh, do the journey video based on this. We're working with the marketing agency, but they are, I'm just kind of like working along the sides. So I'm like, based on what the script they gave me, is 7,500 bucks. And then for us to do animation, it's going to be $12,000, you know, and actually the total came out of 34,000 with they added everything up. But I was like, Hey, you know what? I'll give you this. I'll take $2,000 off for you to like sweeten the deal. Um, you know, so the, this is what they would end up getting. And then these are just the additional things of like, Hey, you need additional film days, 3,000. Then you need us to travel outside of Florida. It's 3,000 plus 1,500. But I made this video on a uh, figure it'll make you Okay. Hey Lydia, what's going on? Uh, figure it, I'll make you a quick video just to go over everything, make it as easy as possible for you. So 
Uh, first thing you're going to see on here is going to be our, our original uh, work scope, which this is going to be for the last video that we're going to go out to shoot, which is going to be the five minute brand video with the interviews and utilizing the animation from the first video we did for you. And that was co quoted at 9,500, which you guys paid 4,750 for. So the balance for that would have been 4,750 for us to finish that project. From there, we had spoken about doing additional videos for you, which you had selected to go with option three, or you mentioned you want to go with option three, which was going to be $20,000, which you got everything listed here, which was the, you know, the brand video. So anyways, like I just laid it out for them so easy that like, cause pretty much what I'm trying to do here is walk them through the proposal just to like lay everything out. And she told me, she's like, yo, she's like, I wish all my vendors did this for me because like you make it so easy for me to come in here and look at what you're sending me. And like, I'm actually able to articulate this to our CEO about what is it that we want to do or what that we need. So like, you know, it's a link of like, Hey, so same here. I was like, Hey, for the 15,000, you're going to get a link. So like, I'm showing them samples of like, what the next what they could expect right because the last thing i want is to like show them something or be like hey this is what we're going to do for you and then they're like well we didn't think like we were expecting something else so like whenever i'm doing these you know graphic or animations or anything like that i'm always sending the clients samples of what they expect before then because like the last thing you want is like they you know we're imagining you know some apple tv commercial and i'm like hey this is what you know if you want something better you know we could do that but the price will change but i always want to have references with them but this is you know the same I've been using this dude in like the three tier process, like helps a lot. And then I'll throw a little video on top of that just to go over it. Because then they're like, wow, no one does this, right? It really makes you stand out in their mind. The really other cool thing about this is that when they watch this video, you're going to get an email from Vidyard telling you like, hey, so-and-so watched this video from their computer. They watched 75% of it, or they watched 100% of it. So now you know, like, oh shit. And then like every time they watch it, you get a notification about it again. So now you're like, wow, they watched this three times. I'll be like, hey, John, what's going on? Uh, just trying to follow up on a project. Uh, do you get a chance to look at my proposal? I actually just finished watching your video. Great. Do you have any questions? Uh, what can I help you with? Yeah. It really allows you to be on top of things. I guess, uh, yeah, one kind of like takeaway, an another takeaway I'm kind of getting here is like, maybe I'm too focused on like itemizing where it's like, itemizing crew, like just like I can visualize those those expenses, expenses, but from like an experience standpoint, I think the gray area of like margin and not just margin, but that the margin of specifically like, okay, I need this to figure it out. <laughs> like the, you know, like the, um, like that, this kind of like buffer and being able to kind of like just put something on the board that isn't like too outrageous, but also gives you enough to like, what's outrageous. I mean, it's just like, I don't know. I, I I guess I'm still stuck on like, you know, I can figure out what they want to a point, but like with only so much information, it's just tough to like determine these like price ranges. Mm -hmm. without well, that, that's kind of why like you, you don't determine it. You, you, you let, you ask them the question, let them determine it for you. So like, and that's when they're like, well, cause like, let's say like, Hey, you know, what's your budget? They're like, I don't have a budget. They're like, well, that's what we're coming to you. Like, okay, great. So sim, so projects like this in the past, when we've done for other clients, they range between, you know, 20 to $12,000 with, you know, the scope that you're asking for. Is that within your budget? And, and, and that it's literally as simple as that. It's just like, they don't have a range. You just mm -hmm. give them an option of the range. You're like, so how much, and it comes down to like, how much do you want to get paid to do this project? Right. So like, that's the numbers that you got to throw out. So I think initially, like, what's your day rate right now? My day rate? Yep. I'm going out with like two cameras for like 1600 okay so that's you by yourself yeah okay so two cameras and that's just sometimes like i don't i don't tell clients about the two camera thing that's usually like something i'll throw in as like it depends it all comes down to how much the client's paying for okay. um because like i don't want to offer two cameras if the shoot to me i don't think it's necessary it always comes down yeah. to me i think of it as like my creative uh because it's like yeah. they're not paying me a lot like why am i going to bring two cameras i just have to like do all this different media syncing but then if it's okay really good interview i want to, i want two cameras because like i want to be able to get you know the multi-cam shot and all that but so right now you said 1600 okay so you brought on an assistant to help you how much are you paying them usually between like 250 and 500 okay so let's just call it 400 for an assistant mm -hmm. right now yeah. so now you're now you're looking at 2k just for your day rate right and then like other things i've learned too recently it's just like when if i'm doing interviews i'm like who's asking the questions and then they're like oh we don't have to ask the questions 
question. Okay, so I need to bring in a producer to ask questions. So that's another 500 bucks. Because yeah. before I used to not do that, I was like, oh, I'll just ask the questions myself. But like, it's... it takes away from you doing what you need to do. So like now I'm like, hey, you either have somebody else on your team. And then like, I'll ask them, I'll let them ask questions. And I'm just, you know, I'm listening to all the process. I'm like, hey, can I ask something real quick? And I'll jump in when I need, when I need to. But if they don't, have someone to ask the questions i'll be like here we need to bring a producer that's an additional rate so right now i'll start telling them that and this is for your own like sake i'll just start like, hey right now my day rate to just come out and film for eight hours is twenty two hundred dollars and like i just tell them it's twenty two hundred dollars i wouldn't tell them that you have an assistant i wouldn't tell them any of those things because like I've done shoots for $3,000 a day that I'm just by myself. And there's other days where I'll bring other people to come and help me. And that's really at my discretion. So like now my rate's $3,000. Like I'll bring people to come and help me. But like right now, like I'm paying people. I think like the most, I think the person I probably pay the most, they probably get like $350 for the day. Then I got like PAs for like $125 a day. So for me, it's just like, I pay, you know, a head person, well, I'll call me like a head person, but like my head, you know, my second shooter PA, they'll get 350 for the day. Then I'll get two PAs or somebody that can like run a boom mic or, you know, they're getting 125 to 150. I'm still making, you know, $2,000 on the day of production. You know what I mean? Uh -huh. um, but that's just from charging a client. Cause like your level of work is really good. Like you could, there's no reason why you can't be charging more than $2,000 a day. And eventually like, yeah, you're going to scare off some clients within. There's always a leeway. Cause like, I think like last, two weeks or three weeks ago, like I did a, sh a shoot that I did it for like 1100 bucks. But it was literally 30 minutes of filming. It was like, they're like, hey, we really need this done tomorrow. I'm like, I could do it. Like my half day rate is fifteen hundred dollars. But like it's one hour shooting. I'm like, I get it, but like it's I gotta get the gear ready. I gotta yeah. go out there, I gotta set up. But like, yeah, we're shooting for 30 minutes. So I'm really gonna be there for like an hour and a half. I can't take on another project. I was like, I could do it for eleven hundred. And they're like, Okay, let's do it. Okay. You know what I mean? Uh so there's always that that leeway but like i think for you now i think your new standard should just be 2200 i was like so that's where you start off right like hey so for me to just come out it's 2200 and then you know then I'll, sometimes it's like well i gotta bring an assistant to do the shoe and we're talking about like then that's when i start adding on those things on top of that that price but that's only if the client asks for it but at least like when they try to justify a price i think you need to have this base down of 2200 because like i think for you moving forward in all your shoots you should always have an assistant with you it just makes your life easier so like the way i've done it you know i've put out things on instagram but i've also gone to like um auto mayhem i've used craigslist um mm -hmm. another great way like what we did in the beginning was i was like i would literally put out the products like if I, I got hired to do an interview i'll go to craigslist and i'll make an ad i'm actually just same thing, Craigslist and Production Hub. I'd make an ad for the exact project that I need to do. And I'll get bids from other people to see how much they're charging me to do it. And then I found really good people. They'd be like, yo, I can do this project for like $750. And the client's paying me $2,000. I'm like, all right, you come and do the project. I'm hiring you as a contractor through me. I'm going to be the director there for the day. You know what I mean? But like, I'm letting them bring their likes and letting them do all, all the shit. But that's when you're able to start like really know scaling and like the less work you're doing within the production itself it allows you to be more creative you get to socialize and talk to their client build those relationships yeah. with them but then also like you're able to work in a sales process because like man i remember the first shoot we did like this where i actually hired somebody else to do a commercial for me and i was like holy shit i was like i just saved so much time today i having to get my camera ready and i having to get my lights ready and i having to do all these different things and then when the shoot was over i'm just like hey give me the memory card i drove home and I was like, I don't have to unload my car. I was like, I was like, I just got back to the computer, start emailing other clients. You know what I mean? Like it really just helped me start moving, you know, the, the ball forward. Yeah, that's awesome, man. Super, super helpful. But yeah, I guess like just recapping, like th with this particular situation, with this, with this one like proposal process or whatever, <laughs> I, I have a meeting with them next week. So I'm wondering if we could like, like, I know you do like role plays and stuff and like, yeah. I'm kind of, I'm kind of like, if you don't mind me just like fixating on this particular issue. Dude, I love it. Like the, this is okay. the, my, like, I love doing this shit. So. Okay, cool. So anyway, yeah. So I have this meeting, I'm actually going over there. And like I said, the whole premise here, like I definitely like did, I was like watching your stuff even before going into it. Like I said, we passed through this discovery form and we did a call and yeah, it's, I, I think right now it's like, they want some direction on like what I think they need mm -hmm. and some prices. 
mm-hmm. on these like different kinds of videos. So it kind of sounds like I'd be going in there. Um, I was even debating like maybe sending him something prior to that. So I'm trying to like determine what I want to do there. But yeah, I mean, I wouldn't been- say I wouldn't say anything prior because like there's a very fine line, and I don't know if you have have you. Have you bought the Win Without Pitching Manifesto? I have not. So I highly recommend you buy that book. But like at this point, I don't think like you should be presenting anything else to them. Like to me, they're already heavily invested into you. And, you know, things can always you know, go other ways. But just from what I'm sensing. So I think you really need to go to this next meeting and be like, hey, so I looked over your form. I have an idea of what you guys are looking for. I think we'll be able to create these three different videos for mm-hmm. your business I, I think the next thing that i need to know is what kind of videos i can create for you guys is where is the ballpark of how much you guys are looking to invest into this production and like i was just like leave it at that let them know like you know or like do you guys have any other questions i'm mean, that's always asked like you know like hey i have an idea i think you should do videos do you have any questions they'd be like no and i'll follow up with like so where in a ballpark are we with the production like where are you guys looking to invest into this project and i mean we so can- you're really just trying to get you're trying to find a budget to start yeah and and it's okay how much do you want to charge for this project so if i did like a full suite for them where it's like all right we're gonna do six faq videos we're gonna redo your about us video and we're gonna do these they're calling them service videos with mm-hmm. your ceo we're gonna get into a studio and film them in front of a teleprompter like do it that way so that's probably gonna be like you know studio fee maybe you know uh sound director dp probably like a three person so let's go back so so we could do a day we could do a day and so knock out one second. Six of them. Go, so yeah. three so you're gonna get three faq videos one service video uh so it'd be probably like six faq videos okay just cause in my experience like once you're all set up you can kind of just knock out like, okay one two, one. six faq um, videos how many service videos right now they said they wanted to start with one but okay. I think I think the the tiered factor of this would be more because they do like I said, they have a whole section on their site for those. Mm-hmm. They want one really bad, and they want options for all the other ones, which I think might be another six. So 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 we'll start off with the first one. So I think your pricing structure should be three FAQ videos with okay. one service video, and then what other videos do they want? A potential redone about us video about us video. which is good, probably a two-day okay so right now for you to do the three faq videos one service video and the one about us video how much is it going to be you, you need to bake all the editing into one thing because to them like and I'll, I'll put a cap at how many hours they might get into revisions but mm-hmm. like to me i never and also never try to get too specific right because then feel like hey i'm charging you for 20 hours and it takes you two and then they're like hey well you you bake this in for 20 hours and then you did two. What are we getting for the rest of those 18 hours? Right. So I try to, I try to not to get too specific. So I just, I kind of tell them like a blanket, like, Hey, because at the end of the day, all they care about is the final product. They don't care about all this other stuff that goes into it. So for right, you, right, right. you need to figure out like, okay, if these are going to be two minute FAQ videos each. How long does it take you to edit a two minute talking head video? I mean, with no media, like how I've done them in the past with no overlays. I mean, probably, probably like a day and a half. So eight hours, maybe like 12. Okay. So maybe there's some graphics in there. Is that per so, video? You know, right now, right now, if I'm just like doing some quick math of just the, just the expenses to do it, we're at 6k. Okay. So okay. If we add, if we add 20% on that. So right now, for you to go in produce three faq videos one service video and one and one above video you're looking at seventy two hundred dollars no that's just for the faq oh just faq okay so then that's you for also, like a that's yeah that's like studio rental three-person crew editing for just an faq day, probably and when are you going to shoot the service and about us video so the about us video would probably be two days because it's like their current one, they talk to like, I think like maybe like they talk to the CEO and maybe like five different employees. And then they go out to a couple of job sites for mm-hmm. me doing that in the past for people. That's easily like a two full days just to like, you know, you got to go out to different spots. You got to do all the interviews, probably two full days. Mm-hmm. Um, so, you know, that would probably be in the like, probably I might do that with a two person crew as opposed to three for the studio and obviously we don't have a studio fee so maybe that would be 
honestly around the same price very close oh 7200 Pro- yeah i would say ball you know just real ballparking so th- so for you, for you to do right now three faqs one service video one about his video you're looking at around 14 and call it 14.5 and that's you're going to get three days of production along yep. with five videos and this always helps uh lower per- fix my calculator so um, let me ask you something. Uh, right. When we're getting into like the real specifics of this, like, you know, like I see like scalable options here. If I were to tier these out, like I'm seeing like options for like, oh, you know, if we didn't rent a studio to do this and we did it in like, you know, an office or something that mm-hmm. I see that as kind of like a scalable option. Like, is mm-hmm. that is that kind of like in like what you could kind of provide on there. Yep. Okay, got you. Or you so, know, maybe bring it up, ma- bring it in makeup to do it and all this stuff. Like. So the way the way I'll do this, so be like, hey, option one, you're gonna get three FAQ videos, one service video, one about us video, and we do it at your office, and we have two days of production, but we have to, we would only, we'd be limited on the number of job sites. We can only go. We'll get all our interviews in the morning. And then the afternoon, we'll go out to do the job site stuff. Option two, you get the three videos, one service, one about us. We have three days of production. You get one day at the studio, or you also get a studio rental. And then you also get two days of production. And then we'll also give you a B-roll package with... Um, all the clips you shot on the second day for 15,000. Option three, you get six videos, you know, six FAQ videos, one service video, blah, 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 whatever, the same thing three days of production, but because you're getting the six FAQ videos, but you said there's multiples. And then like I said, whatever you want, like add another service video in there, but okay, you get three service videos, six FAQs, one about us, it would be 25,000. Like you can scale it up to whatever you want at this point, right? Because I think at this point, like where you make a lot of, where you make a lot of your money is going to be within the editing aspect of this. So like on option three is like the crazy one of like, hey, six FAQs, three service videos, one about us, three days of shooting. Um, and then you, you know, it'll be 30,000 or whatever. I, you got to do the math, figure out what works for you. Yeah, but like, yeah. it'd be, you know, 30 to 20,000 or 30, 20 to 25,000. So you're, you're not presenting like originally I was thinking it'd be like, okay, like segmenting it in like FAQ videos. These are three options. We can do those about us. These are three options. We can do those. And then the last one, these are three options we can do those. But instead, you're kind of rolling them all into like all of this whole thing that you want priced in like three. Three things. options. Yeah. Yeah. So the same thing, like uh, I'll pull it back up. So like here, you know, to complete brand video and addition of your assets, 15,000. One five minute brand video utilizing previous animations, one looping video, 10 standalone micro pieces of content for marketing and social, and then create product journey video. So just like these are the three, I mean, I guess this is, I mean, these are all, I guess in a sense, this is just, these are just kind of add-ons to the project. It's not as necessary as like- um, Wow, I mean, even just like, just like a quick note, like even just how like baseline you're putting something, you're just like, Mm this it, you, and you kind of like write like some features and like some generals and then you're just like 12k <laughs> yeah so i think where's the one i just did for so this is another one we just did oh same thing hey sam here's an unofficial proposal like literally like i just have this within a template wow. so like i don't know if you're using uh gmail but you can create yep. canned emails so same thing so it's like hey option one one full day of production to capture interviews, be real based on the outline provided by the client. So this one, I was like, you provide me the outline. You know what I mean? Basic video titles, two, two to four minute intro and audio video. Option two, 8,000. And then I was like, um, outline, upgrade animations, call out, focus, blah, 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 custom voice. So this one, like for the extra 2,000, I added a makeup artist and then a custom voiceover for the intro video. And then this one, I said 15,000. I was like, you know, you get the two videos, custom thing, photographer to come in to capture content, uh, five pieces of micro hard drive, and I'll create a YouTube channel and upload optimized videos for you. And then they're like, they're like, let's go with option two. And I was like, all right, cool. Um, and you know, in a sense, like this can always change, but like when I option three, I always think of it as like the fully loaded MacBook Pro with all the features that you might not need. But once in a while, somebody wants to buy it. Because then you're like, 
We're doing this whole production. Why don't we get a photographer to come in and shoot all the stuff that day since we're already doing this? So for you, like, hey, I got a photographer that can come in to on day one, on day two. I can bring a, a photographer for fifteen hundred bucks. And you might get a photographer for like five hundred. You know what I mean? So you're making a thousand dollars on a five hundred on that photographer. That's that's awesome. Yeah, like th this client in particular, I feel like that could be appealing because they did say that like they got this new website, but it's completely devoid of content and they want to fill it out so i feel like See? that could be a great ad for them and particular. those are the things that you need to listen to when you're having these calls with the clients because like yes we're we're you know we're videographers and photographers dps but like in a sense like where you make your money is when you're able to solve these problems so like you listening to a client and client so like if i was on that call it would be like client said the website is lacking stuff yeah. they're telling you their pain points you know what i mean so like for you that's where be like hey i know you mentioned an off in like on my video, like follows you, like, hey, and this video proposal, we're like, hey, option three, we had an option to bring in a photographer for today. I know you mentioned that you guys were lacking content for your website. So we're able to get somebody to come in that's already filming. It would be an extra 1500 bucks. You'd get around, you know, 30 to 50 images of the day for you to be able to use your website. And like, I'll just lay that out, you know, on there like that. So I guess maybe just like a, as a last question here, when it, leading up to this like meeting, I'm feeling, I, I'm, I'm kind of gathering that I should have this unofficial proposal, like bring that in on that day. Is that right? Or do you think there's more? I wouldn't bring it in. Um, Cause like in a sense, like I said, you don't want to be presenting. Okay. I think you need to, I think you need to know your numbers in a sense of like, Hey, so if they ask you like, Hey, so what are you thinking? I was like, listen, on the high end of this for us to come, like come out and knock this out of the park, give you everything that you want and more. We're close to like the 25 or $30,000 range. Yeah. That's on not the, Mm -hmm. On the low end of this, for us to do like the three videos, one service video, one about his video, we're closer to like the $14,000 range. I was like, are we within this ballpark? And then it'd be like, hey, we want to spend $20,000. I'm like, okay, let me figure out what we could do for $20,000. I'm going to, I'm going to send you an email with a three tier option on what we could do for you. But I think you need to go okay. in before your meeting. Like, what is the goal of the meeting that you guys are having? Like, what is the reason that you guys are all getting together for that meeting? Well, I don't know. I guess we talked about doing it on the last call. I, I think they mentioned that somebody, this is why recording a call would be helpful. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I think they had somebody else that wanted to chat too. Cause I start, I started asking like some specifics. Mm -hmm. So I think that somebody else besides the person I talked to wanted to talk, wanted to talk. And, you know, I was still kind of in this very, like, you know, we're trying to figure out what you want, like, and I'm kind of now realizing how that's, that's messy and time intensive, but like, that's where we are with it. Does that make sense? So, yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe, you know, I think, you know, diving into like, where is their price and throwing some ranges out is so definitely sounds like where we are if yeah. i have to say and like whenever you set up to go to a client meeting like it's something i've learned just like you want to have like what is the intent of all of us getting here because like, the last thing is like you don't want to get to the meeting and be like hey so you know what are why are we all here today so yeah. like if you're like hey just want to set the tone for um be like hey guys so like i'll send out an email if anything it'd be like um hey guys looking forward to our meeting next week i uh, just want to set the uh the tone and go for next week's meeting it would be for us to finalize any questions that you may have about the video and just for us to sit down and go over some pricing options let me know if i missed anything else uh that should be in our agenda so when you guys yeah. get to the meeting be like hey cool so let's start what questions we have i want to make sure uh i got all my notes and then pretty much you'd be like hey so i just want to recap real quick you no know, so and so security company is looking to update you guys are looking to update your uh your marketing with a series of videos highlighting your FAQs to services and about the videos are going to live within your, your website. And the goals yeah. of these videos is to be able to help you guys illustrate the services of what you guys offer to how it helps, you know, B2B customers and, and B2C and you no know, residential properties. So we're looking to produce, so like I have some notes here. So just to clarify this, are you guys looking to produce three to six FAQ videos? Is this correct? Yes. Are you guys, and also you want to do service videos. How many were we thinking? And it'd be like, Oh, we wanted five. Like, okay, five service videos. Got it. And then what you want to redo one about us videos is correct. Cool. Awesome. So um, I think I have an idea what you guys are looking for. Are we working within a budget for this project? And that's where like, and most of them, most of the time they're going to be like, you know, oh, that's where, that's where you're here today. I'm like, okay, great. Yeah, no worries. Yeah. I just want to ask, you know, cause sometimes, you know, people have certain budgets within what they mm -hmm. want to do. And, you know, I want to make sure that we're able to deliver what you're expecting. So I'm just ballparking this. And then something else when, 
I've used this is like, I'll tell them like, I won't hold you to this, but where's a ballpark for this project for you guys? And like, when you tell them like, I won't hold you to this, it kind of lets them go like guard down. I'm like, hey, like, I won't hold you to this. I'm just curious. What's your ballpark? You know, because think of me as your realtor. I don't want to show you a million dollar home and your budget's 500,000. But then also, I don't want to show you $500,000 homes if your budget's a million dollars. So it's just like, help me. So we're both in the same page. So like, is there a range that we're working with? So those are kind of the ways that I like, I try to dig that out of them. And then yeah. it'd be like, well, like, no, we're not really sure. We don't have a set budget, but all right, cool. So on the high end, based on what you guys want, we're talking about close to $30,000. On the low end of this, we could produce this for around 14,000 or like around $15,000. Is that what we had in mind? And then like, that's when you just be quiet and like read the tone, like look at their body language, let them respond first. And then, yeah, I guess if you get... So ideally you get to like a final like this is really where their budget is and you're kind of like appropriating what they're saying they want into the price point okay mm -hmm. for 15 we can do this and then boom you can sign a contract the next day yeah so like hey so for let's so all right so i was like and i'll send you a pricing structure but like you no know, just looking at the numbers here for fifteen thousand, what i think we could do we could do three faq videos we could do your service video and we could do your bowders video and it would be you know one day for us to shoot your faqs you maybe be able to squeeze a couple of interviews in there for your bowders and the second day would be for us to go out to job sites capture all the footage um, you end up getting, you know, five videos in total. Like, I don't like to go into much of like the production days, but in a sense, I just did the math here. So like what they did 15,000 for five videos divided by they're paying like $3,000 for video, which I think is a reasonable price, you know, for you know, some good quality yeah. videos, but it usually helps. And they like, when you try to justify things, they'd be like, Hey, no, you're coming out of like, no, $2,500 for all these videos. You're getting $3,000 per video. It helps them look at it more individually versus like, oh, 15,000. You know what I mean? Yeah. 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 Are you ready for your role play? <laughs> sure. So I'm walking in the door. Hey, hey guys, you know, thanks for meeting today. Just want to review um, exactly why we're here and, you know, what I can do for you guys. So, you know, based on our calls, like, I have an understanding that you guys want to do this, this, and this, uh, what that, you know, basically, you know, you asked me about getting a couple options for some videos that include an about us that include, uh, an FAQ series and include uh, a number of service videos. You know, is that sound, you know, is that, you know, verify that with them? Does that sound right to you guys? Uh, that sounds about right. Um, you know, we probably want to do a couple of service videos on top of the FAQ videos. Okay. Based on that, like, first of all, for you guys, are you guys working off of any kind of budget for this? Um, we're still trying to figure it out depending on you know what each video costs and how quickly we can get it done um but mm -hmm. you know we're coming to you to you know get a price of course yeah i mean i i know you guys have mentioned that turnaround is really important and something that you mentioned that you didn't like about you know the last person you worked with um but you know just just so i you know just so i know where you guys are just so I, just so I, you know, can, can ballpark this and, you know, no, no pressure, but, you know, I don't, I don't want to pitch you, uh, I, you know, just latching onto this like house. Uh, mm -hmm. that was, just try, really just let cool. it out. This is, okay, this is cool. practice. I don't want to show you, you know, million dollar houses if your budget's half a million. And I, you know, also on the inverse, I don't want to show you $500,000 houses if you're looking for a million dollar house. So, you know, like what, where are you guys at with, like, where, what are you guys trying to spend on this? Um, I love the analogy. Um, you know, we're not really sure. Um, I think at this point, we're really just trying to get some numbers from you. So we're able to kind of uh, compare it to some other vendors that we're talking to. What do you think it would cost to produce this? Right on. So yeah, on the high end, you know, if we wanted to, you know, really knock this out for you guys at the best of our capacity, based on what you told me that you guys want, I'd be thinking somewhere in, in the you know, twenty five to thirty thousand dollar range for an entire suite. And you know, you mentioned you wanted you're basically trying to like really get some effective content on your website. Um, and you know, we definitely you, you know, you show me the potential for where you see content on all the different pages. So, you know, on the high end, I'd be thinking that and I'd love to basically give you some options from there because I know you had a couple of specific, you know, different uh different asks for different parts of the website. So I'd be thinking, you know, that on the high end and you know, basically listing out some options from there. Um, and what would you be getting for the 25 or 30,000? So that would be um, a new about us video, which, you know, you kind of, you mentioned you're on the fence about, and 
you know, we think we think we see room for improvement for that. You know, you talked about FAQ series would be for all the FAQs that are currently on your site, which is six, you know, so six FAQ videos. Um, and then the last, the service videos, which is seemed like the most important thing to you guys on our call. So that would be another uh, four videos that are for your service page. So that's what is included in all of them, you know, and, you know, based on your need for this website, like we want to throw a photographer in there as well, because all of your messaging right now is very text and we just see, I guess, potential for uh, like all, all, all that content, just, you know, ser serving your website. All right, let's pause right here. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So when you start the meeting, before you say anything, do you guys have any questions I can address before we move forward? Because give them the chance to speak first in case that way there is something that you might have to talk about and you could just address. Because I've been in a position where like I spoke too soon mm -hmm. and they would have told me everything I needed, but I was like such in a hurry to get it done that like I just shot myself in the foot. Yeah. So it's like, hey guys, thanks so much for your time. Appreciate you being in a meeting today. Before we get started, do you guys have any questions uh, that I can answer for you? I know you guys wanted to wait for John to be here because, you know, you had some specific questions of, about the process. I just want to knock it out of the, uh, out of, get that out of the way before we start. You know what I mean? Yeah. So like, yep. to them, be like, hey, I'm here. I'm taking control. Other than that, slow down a bit. Because I think when you got into the um, telling about like what they're going to get, I yeah. kind of feel like you you rushed into like, do you have a budget? Like in the middle of things. Mm -hmm. So I think more in the end of it is be like, so, oh, so you answer his questions. Great. Based on what we discussed, we're looking to produce anywhere between, you know, five videos to possibly 10 videos for this project. Are we working within a budget for the shoot versus being like, versus asking like, Hey, what's your budget? It's like, are we working within, are we like me and you, like we're here together. Are we yeah. working within a budget for the shoot? And you'd be like, mm -hmm. well, no, we're just trying to get some numbers. So in that time, you, you told me the 25 or 30, and then you went on to tell me all these things about um, what was going to go into it and this and that. And to me, it's like, oh, he's really trying to sell this. So you'd be like, so on the high end, we're talking 25 to 30. On the low end, we're probably in the 14 to $15,000 range. Is that within our budget? And that's all you have to say. Like, we're like, hey, we're thinking about the photographer. This is where you're like, let them ask questions. So like, Okay, so for the twenty five to thirty thousand, what would we get? Well, we'd be able to do, and then you tell them, be like, and then you have your notes. All right, for the thirty thousand, we could do six FAQs, three service videos, and one about us video. And mm -hmm. uh, I was also thinking we could bring in a photographer because you mentioned that you guys were looking to update uh, some of the uh, content on your website. So for us to do all of that, edit all the videos, we're probably close to the thirty thousand. Now, if you guys, we can always scale this down for the 15, somewhere there in the middle, we could do three FAQs, you know, one service video, one about his video, and um, we'll do, you know, one studio day. Um, that could, we could probably, probably do something like that for like 15. Like, uh, what do you guys think about that? It's always like, what are you thinking about? So like, you give them a number, what do you think about this? Because like, you want to be, it's kind of like a give and go, right? You want to give them information, but then you also want to let them process it. So with you and you're like telling me about like, you know, you mentioned this, 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 and that. We're going to get a photographer. Yeah. It's just more information, more information, more information. At this point, you're not taking anything back. So it's always like the give and go like, hey, high end 30,000, low end 15,000. How does that sound? They're like, well, that sounds within our budget. Great. So where within a budget are we exactly? So like try to get more precise about it. Like we're looking to spend 20,000. Like, okay, so 20,000. Ideally, what are you guys looking to get for the 20,000? And like, that's when you go like a little bit deeper. Well, for 20,000, we really like, you know, five FAQ videos, da 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 and be like, all right, for 20,000, realistically, I could probably do you no know, four FAQ videos, one service video and about us, and I could bring in the photographer. And then they'd be like, well, we really need, you know, three service videos. Like, okay, well, we could lose a photographer and do one more service video. And that's where like the negotiation part, but it's always like give and go, give and go, give and go versus like usually like the more, like less is more in this situation. Like the less you speak, the more like you want to let, you want to let them do all the talking for you. I definitely picked that up from your stuff like you you would really seem dialed in with your like all your responses and your questioning and it's just practice man you know mm -hmm. and it's like i watched so much of chris's stuff in the beginning but like i'll literally just role play with my sister 
I like role play with my girlfriend. I'd be like, yo, be a difficult client right now. I'd be like, you know, because then because my girlfriend is a perfect example because she worked for she did HR for a company that was actually looking to hire somebody to do video for them. So she would be like, yeah. you know, just ask me questions that you would want to know or like yeah. what would you guys need to know? So like just that role play of back and forth. But the really yeah. important part is like doing the role plays and then watching them. Okay, where did I think I messed up on here? Like where do I think I can improve what I just said? But like, you know, you really just focus focusing on like being able to say so right now on the high end we're looking at you know 30 to 25,000 on the low end we're at the $15,000 mark for the five videos what are you guys thinking and like that's really and then the, and like let them talk let them tell you but like, okay cool so like I think I got everything that I need here so if I'm able to present you guys three pricing options ranging between 30,000 to 15,000 is that something that you guys are looking to move forward with and they'll tell you like yes or no and if they tell you no and this is where like a lot of people that don't like comps like they'll kind of freeze on that if somebody they'll like to be like no 15,000 is a lot I'd be like then that's me be like I'm like yeah it, it's definitely a lot of money so what were you guys thinking like what did you guys actually need because like most people would be like oh you know you tell them the number and they'll be like okay they don't want to do this not necessarily. Maybe you do one FAQ video, one service video, one about us, right? So like it's always a negotiation for what works out for you. So they tell you like, hey, 15 is a lot. I just cut down the liverables now. And I used to be like, just because, you know, they wanted to spend $3,000 for like a five minute video, I'd be like for $3,000, I can give you like maybe a two minute video. Like I'm not gonna, I can't give you a five minute video for 3000. Cause I used to always try to accommodate them on what they wanted. And then I realized like, no, if you're not meeting me what I need to do this, like you're not gonna get the thing that you want for that price, right? I'm gonna cut down the deliverable as well. And if it doesn't work out, then hey, it doesn't work out. So it seems like I need to, like the, the, the really quick adjustments to the numbers versus the like, costs and deliverable that also seems like very much like a skill like i need to have in top of mind like oh like this is what this is really what i want the middle tier to look like for that price range and then you know you kind of negotiate it it's like a couple thousand off here a couple thousand off there or whatever and then figuring out what that like the the, the lowest one is and knowing exactly what i want to offer at that point based mm -hmm. on their ask right so yep. that's uh, you know to me that that sounds like you just will get the but you know determine what where you want them to be beforehand at least like short hand mm -hmm. and that's kind of something you, i also see like potential to develop of like you know what i mean like like just nebulous talking at different price points like being immediately able to like scale them you're right and there's projects that are gonna come up that like this doesn't work or somebody might just come up to you like hey we have three thousand dollars to do this or we have five thousand dollars to do this and like you know you're not gonna and like you have to read out with the client in the sense of like what are they willing to do but like the fact that you're sitting down with the company you're talking to multiple people so like they have money to spend right it's not like the barbershop down the street that they only have like two thousand dollars to do something this company has multiple employees they're making millions of dollars a year right. thirty thousand dollars is not a lot of money and in the grand scheme of things so like with other projects where it's just like you know you got you have to figure out when that works out but like it's good for you to get in a sense of like practicing it and just yeah. trying to like try it with different clients because like we squeezed a couple hundred bucks out of other clients that like i might have done something for like you know you know they just needed a quick day of filming and we ended up getting like they told me like hey our budget for the filming is four thousand dollars and i was gonna charge them like fifteen hundred bucks because like it was really half day shoot they're like yeah we have four grand to do this but all right, great. It's always like, like, I don't want to, like, I don't want to waste your time. I have this whole back and forth about the budget. Just so I know, where's the ballpark for you guys to make? Like, what, uh, and I, the other one is like, what's the number that would make this work for you guys? Like right now, like, what's an ideal number? Like, I won't, I won't hold you there. Just give me a ballpark. Be like, we have 4,000 for the shoot. Like, okay, cool. I was like, I think we can, I think we can accommodate that. You know what I mean? But just being very precise. Cause like, People will respect that because like, like, listen, let's just minimize the whole back and forth thing. Like, I don't want to send you a proposal and you send it back, then the number doesn't work yeah. for you. For me to make this work for you, like, I really want to work with you. Like, I like your project. Like, where is the ideal number? And just be very precise. You know, I'm like, I won't hold you to it. Yeah, because they're they're so like, they're very like non-specific. They're not like, we want this one particular thing. They're like, oh, we kind of want this, kind of want this. Like, what do you, what do you mm -hmm. recommend and what would you charge? And it's like it makes way more sense to just really try and get that number out of them. So I can be like, okay, yeah. Is this going to be like five or 30? Like that's mm -hmm. like, what are we working with? And I think that's, and that just comes with like you practice and, f and feeling confident in what you do. Yeah. But you have an idea, like you have an idea, like, Hey, listen, I think I have an idea of what you guys want. 
So is there a budget that we're working within for the shoe? It's really, I think that's where like you just have to practice like, hey, is there a budget that we're working within the shoe? And they're going to be like, like, yes or no. And that's where you're like, okay, great. And then you tell them, you know, high end 30,000, low end 15,000. Are we within, are we within the same ballpark? And they'd be like, yes, we're within the same ballpark or, or no, we're thinking less than that. Or, and then you'd be like, the reason I asked this, and then be like, the reason I asked this is, you know, think of me as a realtor. I'm not doing you any service by showing you $500,000 homes when I know that your budgets, if I knew your budget was a million and the same in the other way. And I always do it the other way around versus be like, I don't want to show you, if you do it the other way, you're like, hey, I don't want to show you a million dollar homes when your budget's 5,000. You know, it's going to make them seem like they're cheap. So, but if you're like, hey, I don't want to show you uh, $500,000 homes when, you, in your, when your budget's a million. Yeah. You know what I mean? In the same way around, like, I don't want to show you million dollar homes if your budget is 500,000. So like, you're going to like, you're, you're going to make them feel like they're spending more. Like you want to make them feel like they're like, yeah, we got some money to spend. You know what I mean? Versus the other way. Cause the other way makes it sound like you're more reserved. Like you're working within that budget. Yeah. Cause yeah, I would, I would say that they're probably like, they're in the kind of like medium size. Like they have a couple locations in like the Northeast. Yeah. So, they're yeah. making millions of dollars. Yeah. Yeah. So you know I mean? they're not. They're not like small ticket or anything. Yeah. Um, okay. Well, that that's, you know, just based on how I know them right now, they're pretty, they've been pretty like transparent and direct. You know what I mean? So mm -hmm. I, I feel like those are def like th that, that will, those questions will be it. I feel like. Yeah. So far. Um, we definitely got to do some work on your website though. Yeah. So like you have really good work, but I think um, in a sense, like what I'd love to see like more of you, it'd be like um, like a, a little intro bio here. And then like, are you doing more music videos or like the DP is more of where you're leaning towards? I mean, it's, it's like, it, it, it's honestly both. Mm -hmm. Like the music video niche is something that I do, but. Are you getting, are you uh, making money from the music videos? yeah for the right ones like i say no to most of them mm -hmm. but uh like i have a couple of like label clients that are pretty regular and yeah i mean right now i i i'm perfectly aware that it's kind of like a portfolio site and it's it's been it's caused a lot of confusion from people about like what it is that i do and it's been something that yeah like moving on to this like challenge number two which is like branding and poising i feel like the way forward is have a have a dp site that's more like personal branded and then have like an actual more more so like production company website that's speaking to like we make brands for businesses you know we mm -hmm. that this kind of thing so that, that's kind of like my my where if my I, head is with the site stuff if i was you just write down this 100 film direct sheet their website's also built on squarespace yeah but you know original branded content creators i mean original and branded content i think video, original and branded video content based in pa and then you need something like this on your website as well so i think you've worked with some like good clients but i think like you just because even the clients aren't big for that we had logos and we started with, like companies that weren't big but like just locally but like five below is somebody that people know or i saw some other yeah. stuff here where you have sure, oh, like sure. yeah so like if it was a nike thing like i'll put these logos yeah. right screen even if it's just on here so it looks like you work with like some established brands like something coming across sure. like that and then i'll put versus films i'll put something like corporate work or something that like just speaks more out because like if i was the company talking to you i definitely want to see more of like this stuff here or just see that like okay he's done some corporate things before yeah. versus just like films and like yeah. i'm all i'm always hesitant about the music video but if, like that's something that like is working for you make you're making money from it it, then um then you know more to it but like for me i like i eliminated like all of our event stuff off my website because it just wasn't yeah. like the kind of stuff that i wanted to get and i yeah. really wanted to tailor that so like you no know, my ideal client they came in already seen what they are what they're looking for on there so having really just one page for work it's kind of more more what i see like i know the different categories of stuff is like it's unfocused and it's it couldn't be like conflicting for prospects to look at and be like 
well, all different. There's I no- think for you it works because, like you said, a lot of the stuff that you're getting is like still like deep. You're like DPing, and yes, you're getting some of your own clients. But yeah. I always like yeah. it's always like a year from now. What are the clients that you want to get? So for us, like you know, like I said, we took down a lot of things recently. That like right now, all of our stuff is like this talking head stuff, and then there's some kind of like animation or, or, or graphic behind it because like those are the clients that I'm looking for. Like. We used to do a lot of event stuff. Like we don't get any more calls for events. I don't get calls for music videos anymore because like I took those, like what are the projects that I want to start getting? Those are the projects that we start highlighting on our sites because like that's what I want to start attracting. Right, right, right. Yeah. Anything else, man? <laughs> so the the third, so yeah, I had three, three things. You know, the discovery thing was really the thing I wanted to bite down on like a lot. The branding thing I feel like is obvious and I kind of like, really learned like your take with your other calls on your site. Cause that was like a real thing. Like you'd be, you do like website critiques and a lot of that stuff was like very like out there. And like, I, I was like, okay, this is what Rodrigo mm-hmm. thinks about this. Perfect. Um, but yeah, the last thing when it comes to like in this production company thing, like the growth aspect, like you have to get like really slick with like subcontracting. Uh, I kind of wrote, it, I wrote it down as systems, processes, and training when it comes to this, like, okay, like you're sending out all this work that you're not actually touching. Is it the right people? How do you make sure they're doing it your way? And th- that whole like managing a team stuff. Mm-hmm. It's, it was kind of the last thing I wanted, I wanted to talk about. So like, you know, you're talking about, you know, you're doing some fiber vendors. You probably have some, you know, people, you, you said that about the Craigslist stuff, you're bringing people on set. Like, what has that ex- experience been like when you're like, okay, like we're really outgrowing me personally. I'm not editing. I'm not, you know, delegating basically. Well, I think for most people, and that's something I've struggled with in the past is like, you got to figure out like, what is it that you want? Right. Because like, I know friends down here. That they're busy doing work but like they do not want to run a production company they just want to come in they just want to shoot they want to get paid and that's it so first i think you need to align yourself with, with like what is it exactly that i want to do what am i looking for because like with you growing the company like it takes away from you being creative and it, it, it goes into you doing like you're literally running a business at this point it just happens that your business ha- happens to be video production so like do you have good people management skills but like for me, it's worked out because like I've always loved entrepreneurship. I always love about making money. So I think the best way to start off is like first, I'll just bring somebody on. That's like like your B cam PA person. You're constantly just training them. And you get to a point that you're comfortable enough with like just sending them to like a basic shoot, and they're like knocking it out of the park for you. Other option is I know a lot of other you know production companies down here in South Florida, people like very similar doing work than me. That I'm just like, hey, how much you charge to do video? And then like there's you put I do like I have some ideas. His name is Alex. He does really good fitness stuff, probably better fitness stuff than I could shoot. It's like hey, for me to do like you know a commercial, be like three Gs great i'm selling commercial fitness commercials now for five thousand dollars you know like i know i can go into a set with alex and give him direction if needed and be able to you know profit two thousand dollars from him completing a project for me but at first i had to go through the process of, like building a relationship with alex making sure i like this work maybe i'll bring him on to work in a set with me because then like there's people that do really great work super unprofessional right like so those are things that like hey Yo, Alex, I need an assistant. Like, can you come on and help me to shoot something one day? Do they hustle? Like, you know, do they have like, are, are they going to be representing your brand well? So uh-huh. it is a, it's a, it is a long process, but the time comes, it makes your life a lot easier now. Cause then, like it all comes down to, you just have to vet the people that you think would be good fit for your team. And then like anyone, and you know, I've been, well, I'll say guilty of this, but like I recently started cutting in a lot of people from my roster of just like, you know, I give them two or three times or like, you know, tries to come out on a shoot. They just don't pick up the pace. They're not well-groomed. Um, Like yeah, they just yeah. don't represent the brand well. And I'm like, my sister is down for another shoot. And then she's like, dude's cool. But she's like, he doesn't match. He's like, he's not like, the, he's not Tasker Studios vibe. And I was like, you are right. Like really good kid. Like, you know, somewhat good cinematographer. When it came down to like his vibe and like appearance to what, I want my brand to represent and like it doesn't fit that and uh you know alex ramosi had a good post not so long ago that he talks about like what he learned from working with the uh, navy six team or whatever but he's like everyone in the navy six or i forgot what they call it but he's like 
everyone on that team is as equal or not better than the next person. So like one person is down, they know that the other person behind their behind them has their back to 100%. He's like, if they put on somebody that's like not as good as them to watch their back, what's going to happen? Like you're leaving yourself open to a soft spot, which then could take down your whole team. So everyone that makes it into the Navy six, I mean, like everyone is just as good as the next person. He's like, that's how you build a really good team. It's like, he's like, you can't have a bunch of, you know, A players and throw a C player in there. Like you're going to be, you're going to have a weak link. So he's like, start surrounding yourself with more people like that. And, you know, that's where eventually I'm trying to do now. It's like now me charging more money and and you go through a phase, right? It's like right now we're charging anywhere between like, you know, 10,000 to $20,000 for a project. I'm starting to make a little bit less money right now because I'm bringing on more people for the shoots. But it's just a stepping stone because now we're going to produce twenty to thirty thousand dollars like of a quality project that I can start lending thirty to forty thousand dollar projects, which then I'll end up making more money. But I always I went through this phase, and I learned this with my sister when I first hired her because I remember I think the the first year when we did a hundred thousand, I ended that year. I had a hundred bucks in my bank account and I was like, yo, what the fuck? Next year I life. The first year we did 40, like 45,000. That was like my first year as like entrepreneur. And I remember yeah. new years. I wanted to go out. I only had a hundred bucks in my bank account. And I was like, what the fuck? I was like, all this hard work. I have a hundred dollars yeah. to my name. Next year we did a hundred thousand dollars. And I was like, holy shit. The year after that, we did like 135 and then we're like 150. And like, it's been, it's going through there. But like I made a little less money that year, but then the next time it's always come more and more and more. That's awesome. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I definitely am like, yeah, get, getting the hang of all, all of these aspects of this growing the production company where you're thinking about running running things, being able to work with clients, be able to price these projects, be able to delegate. And I do see it as like just a direction that I think I'll probably inevitably can continue to like grow towards even though i'm like enjoying still like freelancing like yeah so you know I mean, at a glance dude, you're, you're making money right now like honestly how old are you 29 like you're still young like, i started tasca studios when i was like 29 30 years old it's like i moved back home south florida when i was 30 but like right now if i was you like and i have so a buddy of mine he has like a small production company in that sense but like he has like two people that help him he's He's at like $150,000 this year already. And he is just DPing for this marketing agency. And they're sending him $10,000 projects. And I'm just like, so like he's literally shooting like two $10,000 projects a week right now. I know. So yeah, that, that's the other thing is I'm, I'm kind of wondering, like I still haven't like reached the full potential of like, okay, like is freelance where I want to stay? And can't, and as opposed to, this production company thing where you're like, you know, you're making sales, like you're setting the prices for stuff. You're, you can like kind of that like lucrative, lucrative aspect to it. But then again, yeah. yeah, Like I know some like these, these just, you know, people that stay, just stay in freelance world. They're like, I'm Mm -hmm. the I'm doing all the stuff. And, you know, hearing stories like that, like somebody's like, oh, I got an internal contract for Under Armour. I'm shooting stuff that is all internal. And it's just like, it's just breaded. It's not, but so like, I, I like those scenarios because like, yeah. like a lot of this stuff I learned in the sense of like a lot of things I learned within my business is when I was working for a catering company in New York city. So like a lot of the process of like how we do customer service, how we show up and people operate on, on, on a set is from what I learned from a bigger company. Mm. So when you have the opportunity to work for a bigger company, you're able to take, you're, you're able to like take in so much into your own business. So like you're four years in, you're getting these other projects, like I'd keep DPing. I'd start mentoring somebody that can start helping you on sets, on projects. And eventually, like, you know, you are going to build out a phase of like having a production company. But in the sense right now, it's like for getting a lot of clients that just want you to DP stuff, do those DP things. But then, you know, build out your portfolio page for like corporate filmmaking stuff yeah. and start reaching out to market. Like our some of our best clients are other marketing agencies that don't offer video and they need somebody like you. Know, sometimes you being a DP versus like our problem we run into is because like we're like a video marketing agency. So like clients, other marketing agencies sometimes don't like the fact that we offer YouTube and different things like that for clients because that, that's something they want to do. But if you're just a DP and you just produce really solid work and you can do it for other agencies that don't offer a video. It's a great gateway to people just to send you leads. Yeah. Right. Cause they're basically like, they kind of 
like they're going to be whipping the like whipping up packages or you know Mm -hmm. sending out all the proposals and like pricing stuff out and you're basically getting it after it's closed yeah you just have to show up and shoot and like what i love about those shoots is like the sales process is super short do it okay we got the shoot we have six thousand dollars to do it and you got to figure out okay it's six thousand dollars but I don't have to close a client. I don't have to, are you guys doing pre-production? Great. Are you guys doing pre-production? Like I just have to edit. Okay. So like, so those yeah. are things where like, I look at certain projects, but like, okay, I'll, I'll take on this project because like my sales process is so short. Like I don't have to deal with like the, the bags are already closed. You just like, do can I deliver on what they're looking for? Yeah. I'll take on projects like that because like they're a lot easier versus like a dentist that's on a fence about spending $3,000. I'm talking to you for two months. I'm like at the, at the point of being like, dude, I should have charged you for a thousand dollars a month for just talking to you about this video and giving you all these ideas. Yeah. Right. So for, for like, so agency world is still another, like such a big, just big area. I'm trying to understand. Like one question in particular is, you know, if I, if I really want to do like a big, like outreach thing mm-hmm. in, on the agency side of things, like, would you say like posing more as like the personal brand or more of like a production company brand is like the way to go to like talk to them i don't think there's a personal way um because like i know there's somebody else that i know here in south florida that they are like a wedding biographer they do commercial stuff on the side and they work to the same client as i have and like he presents himself as like you know a solo dp where we present ourselves as a studio I think it comes down to like, does your work fit what the client is looking for and the brands that they, because like at the end of the day, that's like the client just care about the final product. So like, it doesn't matter if it's your one person, if it's a five person team, it's like, hey, can you deliver on what we're looking for? So that's what I tell you, like build out that commercial or corporate, you know, paid so you could like, reach out to a company like hey this is all the samples of our corporate stuff here's my commercial reel here's the interviews that we've done normally these projects range between five to ten k that's as simple as that that's fair yeah okay so not getting too yeah like not hyper fixating on on brand because i always i always have like a oh man do i like need to show myself this way or this way but but i think more work focused and trying to match that with who you're approaching i mean let let your work speak for yourself for sure um it never hurts, like, it's never going to hurt you to build a personal brand, right? right? So, like, if it's between, like, you building a personal brand and you building your business, I'd say invest in your personal brand. Because then, like, you could literally go anywhere with that. And the same thing, like, a lot of people just know me for, you know, Drigo, but they don't necessarily know Tasca Studios. So, like, your personal brand, like, you can go anywhere with it. As long as, like, they know, like, yo, Josh does some really dope work that's all the people need to know right at, at, at the end of the day that's that's profound because like that's kind of what i'm experiencing like people are still sending people to me even mm-hmm. though like i feel like like my website is kind of whatever but i you know i have some stuff on there that i feel like like is pretty good and but you know so like i like i just got like a I just partnered with like this like healthcare system. They were like, oh man, like we're really looking for somebody. Like there's this internal person and they have like way more than they can handle. So mm-hmm. they're trying to like kind of like you said, they're like they have the projects like already closed and they're just like, Can you take care of this? You gotta shoot it and edit it. And I'm like, Yes. That's it. <laughs> so that, that's like a good yeah. Thing. I think the other thing you should do in your website is just like take down any like you show your best work. That's it. Like there's there's other stuff that you feel like it doesn't represent you as well. Just take it down. It's not gonna. It's not gonna benefit you. Like it goes back to the same thing we talked about in our conversation. Less is more. Uh, yeah. In the sense of like, because I think now for even my personal website or not person, but like Tasca Studios, I think we only show like nine projects now. Let me see one, two, three. Okay, so we have like twelve projects, but it's all on one page. But it's all yeah. all of it falls within the same thing. It's all like you know, it's all business videos business videos with a little component of like motion graphics or like some type of animation and, and that's all that we have yeah because nobody's gonna like deep dive your catalog necessarily i mean yeah, they, they're, just gonna, they're gonna go to your website and be like okay does this person produce great work they're gonna look at a couple of videos to see like okay are these consistent so that's when i say like when i see people that have like videos that did three or four years ago and it doesn't look like the stuff they're producing now you're just building insecurities to the person looking at your website because they're like wait this video looks really good, but that one looks kind of weird. They don't know that that's from two or three years ago. Yeah, so right. now, so now you're like, okay, maybe so like you're making them 
you're creating doubt within their head about what you're able to do. So like now, like I just show projects we've done within the last year and a half that I know matches what I'm trying, like what we're currently producing. So like sure. you can land on two videos and be like, okay, they can produce the kind of stuff that we're looking for. That's it. Awesome, man. The one thing I hate about my website right now is that I'm a web flow and I need to use a like designer to make changes. But like when I have my, my Squarespace website, I was making updates and changes on that thing like every other week. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Like as certain things are passed through, like I could easily change like X amount of things even right now, you know? So, Mm -hmm. well, I think that that's about all I had. And that was a walloping man in a good way, (laughs) in the best way. So So, man, well, I look forward to hearing you about closing this uh, $25,000 deal. (laughs) So, oh man. Just be confident, man. Just when you say it, practice in the mirror. Just be like, hey, so based on this, I would yeah. say high end 25,000, low end 15. Are we in the same ballpark? Dope, man. Well, I just followed right. you on Instagram. I'm going to keep watching, man. Just, uh, you know, if something pops up, you have a question, let me know. When this video is done downloading uh, or saving, I will uh, send you a copy. And I'm also going to send you a copy of my uh, contracts. Thank you, man. Appreciate Appreciate your time. And I'll definitely watch this again. <laughs> For sure. You got to take notes and then start recording your sales calls, man. 100%. 100%. No, that definitely helps a lot. Like definitely helps a lot to just like understand where you mess up and like where you can improve. Um, So it, go, it, go, it goes a long way. Perfect, man. Thank you again. All right, brother. Take care. See ya.